Olympus Olympzuko Auto Macro 135mm f4.5 was made in Japan and first released on the market in 1980. Olympus manufactured it for 22 years and in 2002 the lens was discontinued. There are a couple of versions of this lens. The early version, which is what I have, has the letters MC on the front plate indicating that this is a multi-coated lens. And for the late version of the Zuiko, the company decided to drop the MC marker altogether since multi-coating became standard for all Olympus lenses. I first found out about this lens when I was browsing through my Zuiko lens catalog. I stumbled upon a small paragraph that mentions the development of a macro 135mm which is suitable for shooting a subject with a great depth at close distances. I was very intrigued and I immediately started searching for this lens. A few weeks later, I found one on eBay for $130. The optical design of the Zuiko lens consists of five elements in four groups. Aperture ranges from f4.5 to f45 with click stops in between. This lens accepts filters with 55mm diameter. The diaphragm is made of eight rounded aperture blades. Focus throw is approximately 160 degrees. On the back, this lens has Olympus OM mount, however, if you attach it directly to a normal OM adapter, as shown here on the right, you will not be able to achieve any focus at all. And the reason for this issue is that this is a macro lens that was meant to be used with Olympus Auto Bellows, but because bellows are cumbersome and heavy, Olympus created the so-called telescopic auto tube 65-116, which was a lighter and more portable option. When the telescopic tube is fully retracted, as shown here, you can use the lens like a normal 135mm lens and achieve infinity focus. But if you want to switch to macro mode, all you need to do is unlock the top of the tube by twisting it like so, and now you can extend it to achieve your desired magnification. Once you're done with your macro shot and want to get back to infinity, simply unlock the tube and put it back in its normal position. Attaching the lens to the tube is very simple, just align the two dots and twist until it locks into place. And when that is all done, you're ready to adapt this lens using the OM adapter that fits your camera system. The lens, together with the telescopic auto tube, weighs 637 grams. When the telescopic auto tube is fully extended, the minimum focusing distance from your subject to your film plane or sensor is 60 centimeters. The Olympus OM Zuiko Auto Macro 135mm f4.5 is without a doubt one of the best 135mm lenses I've used so far. This lens is absolutely spectacular. It is easily one of the most versatile medium telephoto primes I have. For those of you who follow the channel, you probably know how much I love lenses with shorter than usual minimum focusing distance, which is why I was super excited when I first found out about this lens. Even though the maximum magnification of the Zuiko lens is close to half-life size and not a true one-to-one -one macro, it still allows me to get much closer to my subject than any other vintage 135mm lens. And that's just one of its many positive qualities. When it comes to sharpness, this lens rewards you with razor-sharp images, from corner to corner, even wide open. It's simply phenomenal. Shooting this lens at its maximum aperture is a lot of fun because its sharpness is exceptional and its out-of-focus blur is buttery smooth. Step down to f8 or f11, it creates images with outstanding sharpness and it's easily the sharpest 135mm lens I've tried. The colors from this multi-coated Zuiko are just sublime. They're punchy and vivid with great saturation and plenty of contrast. This lens loves colors and if you have colorful subjects, it will not let you down. Chromatic aberrations are basically non-existent, even in challenging situations, which is a great plus for a medium telephoto lens. When it comes to distortion, there are absolutely no issues that I was able to see at all, no matter how close or far I was from my subject. Vignetting is also not a concern, because it's simply undetectable even when the lens is shot wide open. The build quality of this lens is also top-notch. It is made entirely out of metal, with beautifully crafted parts. 
The lens feels very solid and sturdy and it's an absolute joy to use. Everything about it speaks of extremely high quality. The only minor issue I was able to find was a little bit of ghosting when the light source is near the edge of the frame, but that is easily avoidable by adding a lens shade. I know that some people might disregard this lens because of its relatively slow speed, but if speed is not your main concern and you want an outstanding vintage lens in this focal length, I can highly recommend this Olympus lens. Even though this is neither the cheapest nor the smallest or lightest 135mm lens out there, it is still one of my favorites because it produces incredibly sharp images, even wide open, its colors are sublime and it basically has no issues that I have to worry about. And I can go from infinity down to half life size with the same lens and not have to deal with any bellows or extension tubes. And for those of you who love shooting video, this lens produces stunning images when paired with 4K video. Last time I announced a vintage lens giveaway for one of my favorite vintage lenses, the Otto Sears 55mm f1.4. And today it's time to pick the lucky winner. And the winner is... Steven Hambrick. Congratulations Steven, I hope you'll enjoy this fabulous lens. Special thanks goes out to everyone else who entered the giveaway. I'm very thankful for all your kind messages and I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time here at Vintage Optics.